today with another detailed backup lesson. This time we're going to look at the classic bluegrass tune Long Journey Home or Two Dollar Bill in the key of G. If you've been to some jam sessions you're definitely going to run into this song. So I've got detailed backup with the tab exactly how I played it in the beginning of the video. We're going to do five times through this song. So the verse and the chorus the lyrics are different but the melody is the same. So any of these backups that I'm teaching for the verse or the chorus, they could all be interchangeable, okay? I'm gonna break down all the backup note for note and then show you again, kind of my thought process a little bit of why I chose what I did. I think, you know, when you're starting to play backup, it's easy to get overwhelmed. And what I really want you to focus on in this, this lesson is the subtleties. Again, we're gonna stay down the neck. We're gonna stay just between the first five frets on this song, just with some classic Scruggs or Crow style backup. And I don't think we need to get too fancy on this song. We're gonna work on our drive, just our classic bluegrass licks on this song. And if you're watching the preview of this lesson, you can head over to my website, mikeheadingmusic.com and grab the full lesson. You'll get access to watch all the videos and you can download the tabs and the practice tracks. All right, here's the backup lesson for Long Journey Home in the key of G. All right, let's start breaking down this beginner backup to Long Journey Home. So let me play the first eight measures. It'll be like the first half of the chorus and then I'll start breaking it down. Here we go. Do that a couple times. more time now real slow so we're gonna stay down the neck for this whole backup so we're gonna stay within these first five frets for for all the backup for this lesson and I really think this is a great lesson to focus on the subtleties of down the neck backup so all the, the subtle variations we're going to do. So there's no pickup to the backup. Clint's just going to start singing and we're going to start in measure one. So we're going to start with this classic two measure forward roll. So let me play the first two measures because they go together. So we have... So we have two a two measure forward roll pattern. So we're going to do four forward rolls in a row. So thumb index middle. We're going to start with a two five slide. So T-I-M there, 4-3-1 on my strings. And then I'm going to go up and do 5-3-1 three, three times. And then we have four more notes we need because two measures is eight eighth notes. So eight eighth notes per measure. So 16 notes total. So four forward, uh, forward rolls. Four forward rolls is 12 notes. Four times three. So we need four more notes. So the last of that pattern is thumb, index, thumb, middle. That's how we get our last four notes. 
we're going to do 4, 3, and then put our 2nd fret down and do 4, 1. So we have... That's a great roll. One, it just has a, a great syncopation, has great drive. Remember, the melody is... So we're staying away from that by just sliding into that fifth fret. And those last four notes you do don't really matter. You could do as written. You could do the third fret if you want it bluesier. You know, maybe like a nine pound hammer, or you could use it in this song as well, but a bluesier song you could do. Again, you could change those two fives uh, and, and second frets to third frets and you get a bluesier sound. That's a great roll to practice. It's a great one to feel how long two measures is, okay? So let's do that again. So we have. That's into measure three, and that's a great two measure forward roll pattern I want you to keep, you know, in your bag of tricks. I use this one all the time. It's a great roll to start the song. It has a lot of authority, and what I really want you to work on is really picking those notes out loud and proud. you know really punch those notes out and that's going to give the song some drive to start okay now for the next part we're going to play a fill lick so it's a classic scruggs fill lick we're going to hit the open third string for a quarter note and then go up to the fifth string and do five three one back to the open third string with your index finger and then second fret on the fourth string and then open first string very classic scruggs just fill lick the melody goes up to the second string here and basically walks down. So the melody again is. So we're going. So we're, we're not kind of highlighting that second string there in that measure three because that's where the melody goes up. You know, that's what you might do if you were playing a solo to the song, right? So we're basically going to play a line counter to that. And then in the melody, there's a space there, right? In measure four. So now in, when we're playing backup, that's a perfect spot to put a lick. You know, if I was playing lead, I would basically do the opposite. I would do my lick in measure three. And then in measure four, I might just pinch or something. So... But remember, when we're playing backup, we're basically doing kind of the opposite of what you would do for the lead, because that's going to complement the lead. If we're just playing right over the, t the t on top of what the person's singing, it's, it's just not going to work as well. So again, backup is a lot of call and response. So again, it's basically the opposite of what I would do if I was playing lead. I would, if I was doing the lead again, I would do maybe something like this. And now we're going to do, again, a fill lick in measure three. And then in measure four, we're going to now play our backup licks. Basically the same lick as measure three, except we added a two, three slide. And, and we played eighth notes to start. So we have basically the same right hand as measure three. Except for the very first note is instead of, it's just a eighth notes instead of a quarter note. And then we're just adding a slide, or you could do a hammer on either one. So let's play those first four measures. So we have. And then measure five, back to our forward roll, open third string. Two five slide on the four string with, with two forward rolls. So I did four, three, one, and then five, three, one. Again, just setting up, setting up, a, a, just creating that drive. The melody goes back down there, remember. And now we're gonna set up the, the C chord in measure six. So we're gonna hit the third fret on the four string, which is our, it's like a G7. And we're gonna play that note with our thumb and then play thumb middle on the outside strings five and one. And then a two, three hammer on with a forward roll. So strings three, two, one, T-I-M. 
then hit the fifth string because we need one more note, and that's going to lead into our C. And we're going to hit the, the first fret second string. So we have, and you got to use your index finger, your right hand at the beginning of measure seven because the last note of measure six is your is your open fifth string. So you have. And then for the second half of measure seven, we're basically gonna play that Scruggs fill lick again. So it's kind of like the Scruggs fill lick we played in measure four, except we're playing it over a C chord and just starting it slightly differently. Remember the melody goes down there. So we're kind of, again, we're doing the opposite of that. When the melody goes down, up there so we have uh, measure seven is a great one JD Crow used that in, in like old home place again it's a great C lick and then measure eight back to our classic four roll this is the same as measure five so that's halfway through the chorus part so let's play those first eight measures here we go kind of target notes I want you to hit, you know, measure six and seven, really hit that third fret. And then right here, really pop this note out. And then right here. So I think sometimes those subtle little accents can really help move some back up along. So like five through eight, I might accent the open third string at the beginning of measure five. Accent the third fret at the beginning of measure six. Accent the first fret, second string, measure seven. You know, so I'm kind of leading those chords with the accent. Okay, so let's listen to me and Clint do those first eight measures. I lost all my money, but